Uh, Wendell, you've created an unholy abomination, but I love it. <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way. This is the Peak CQ30 from Lee and Lee, and you have added on a retina display. We can't call it a retina display because it's not an Apple product. Nope. A lot of people were like, oh, no, Apple's going to sue you. This is not an actual Apple retina display. This is... It just happens to be a part that may or may not be used in iPad products. Hmm, very similar. It does look a lot like it. It does <laughs> have a gazillion pixels on it. It turns out you can get Chinese tablets that use it too, so I, I, we're fine. Yeah. Now, the pixel count on this. 2048 by 1536. And it... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, I can't see it. It's tiny, blah, blah, blah. That's what the arm is for. See, because the first version that you guys didn't see was the LCD mounted where the window is. The LCD is a little bigger, not quite as tall, but you can't read it. It's, yeah, it's, that, that was the problem is that in order to read anything, people were like, oh, it's fine. Just do it that way. It looks so silly like this. And then, yeah, the guys at Lee and Lee right now are probably like, oh, no, what are they doing? This thing looks awful. You know, it, it does change the aesthetic of the case quite a bit, but it's it's all about function around here. And with the small fonts, you know, anything below like 14, you need to grab the thing and put it right in your face so you can read it. And it doesn't hurt your eyes because it's a tablet and it's designed to be this close. When you put it that close, you can read it and it's very readable and you don't need larger fonts, which, you know, that means you've got lots of screen real estate, which is what I want. And we've got a version three planned that's actually going to do a scissor from inside the case. So you could put the LCD flush against the case or grab the handles that are going to be made out of wire and just pull the thing toward you and it'll scissor toward you. So this is version 2, right? That'll be version 3? Right. And in version 3, we may actually give this computer a name. Yeah, we don't know. But right now, it's sort of... Uh it's in its um, what larval stage. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, now it's going to make a cocoon and be a butterfly <laughs> it is very de- soon. It is definitely the larval stage. So let's talk about what technology we have going on here. First off, you've uh, machined some things together. Um, this is like an old table lamp, similar to the table lamp you would see in the intro to the Pixar, uh, like the Pixar, Pixar yep. intro animation. That's the table lamp. Yep. Taking and it apart, and um, you just, I, I, what is this, like a little piece of plastic right there like a plastic triangle yeah this is really just in prototyping mode so it doesn't look very good and um my original intention was to cut down the um lamp arm to actually fit inside the case but that would hurt the reach but it's really just some lamp parts some scrap aluminum an old laptop lid to cut down to size that's what's uh there's the the lcd itself uh doesn't have any backing and so if you were to try to mount that or fragile. move it around, it can, it can just shatter. it'll just shatter. It's yeah. very thin. It's very fragile. So we're using a magnesium substrate for that LCD. Which was, it was the back of a laptop, right? And you had to cut it in half and just put it there. Yeah, it was the Dell Latitude something or other. It shall live on. <laughs> You're still alive, Dell Latitude. You're still alive. You're much better now. Yeah, it, you know, if we had a scrap iPad 3, that might have been a really good case because I could just mount it in the iPad 3 and then machine some holes in the back and then turn it into a mount. But unfortunately, we didn't have a spare iPad 3. Anybody have a spare iPad 3 or a broken iPad 3 or maybe even an iPad 4? Yeah, an that iPad 4. Yeah, we need to get into the electronics because we're going to show you how to build one of these at home. You can order everything you need off the Internet. Now, we went the hard way and built a lot of our own stuff, but we found other stuff later on the Internet that we like better than the stuff that we hacked together. Yeah, and this guy on the Internet, he's really awesome. We're going to give you guys a link to buy the board that we're using to take a... Uh, we've got a display port coming out of the back of this graphics card. We've got the AC... The uh, Asus. The, uh, I almost said DC. I, I've tried to combine Asus and DC and it came out as AC. We've got the uh, Asus GeForce GTX 760 uh, Direct CU2 OC. It's an overclocked tiny 760 that actually does a really good job at this resolution. So that's in there uh, giving us a display port that's running... You see this big display port cable here plugged into the back. It's running all the way here and then it's uh, stuffed in the case it goes down the length of the arm and plugs into the board that we got off of uh, this guy on the internet. Now, we, our controller board actually supports Mini DisplayPort, but we couldn't find a source for Mini DisplayPort connectors. I actually had a different kind of Mini DisplayPort connector that is soldered on our other adapter, but our other adapter has a crappy backlight inverter circuit. This is actually a really nice backlight inverter circuit, and it's also got an Atmel microcontroller, so you can do firmware upgrades and potentially control other kinds of LCD screens. Like, you just heard a lot of people's heads when you said Atmel controller, and you made a lot of people happy at the same time. <laughs> so we want everybody out there to know that if you just want to do a project like this, you can get 
uh, by without having to worry about the Atmel controller. But you should learn that stuff so you can update the firmware in the future and do new fancy things. Yeah, I, well, it turns out I have an Atmel software development kit, and you know, Atmel is the processor that powers their Arduino. And so you don't need to know any. You don't even need to know that there's an Atmel there. It's just that the guy on the internet happened to use the Atmel for the backlight controller for the volume up, down, and power buttons and the input selector. Now these things don't come with a mini DisplayPort connector on there. If you want that, you'll have to solder it. But it does come with a full-size DisplayPort connector. It's basically a DisplayPort interface. So in terms of getting the LCD part of it to work, you can just wire up an adapter, and you don't even need any electronics. But you've got to worry about the backlight. And that's what this controller does here. It has a really nice backlight um, interface. Yep, so it exactly. takes care of all that for you. And we have a Molex power going through here and then convert it into a small plug. Yep. Just a couple pins on the plug, it looks like. Yeah, so the, uh, the uh, controller board is not smart enough to shut the display down um, when the display's sleeping. But because the display actually runs off the PC power supply, it turns off when the computer goes to sleep. Um, this is never going to work as a touchscreen. I know that's going to be something that everyone's going to talk about in the comments. We tried. Yeah. The Apple digitizer is horribly proprietary. It's... Sorry, I failed. There's got to be some way to do it. I mean, we'll maybe have to rip off some parts from Apple and, and reverse engineer them, but that's going to be a totally different project. <laughs> and that's not something I think we really need right now for this. That part actually does scare me a little bit. Apple would probably send in their SEAL team to <laughs> repel off the building and, you know, raid and be like, oh my God, you're stealing things. That would be better than a video game. I would love to fight Apple's, like, team. Yeah, this display... Not just, their legal team, but, like, you know, their SEAL team. Just for reference, this display is from LG. So no Apples were harmed in the creation of this. It's just that it's an LG display that... Apple uses in some of their stuff. We ate apples while, you know, doing <laughs> this. I believe they were Macintosh apples as well. <laughs> no, I, I like Granny Smith apples. Yeah, uh, I've been getting into jazz apples lately. Never mind. What are we talking about? Let's talk about the actual specs that we're using in this unit. Now, this is uh, version number two. Version one did not even have a graphics card. It was just running uh, straight off the motherboard. This is a Z77. Um, it's the ITX motherboard from uh, ASRock. And it actually is doing a pretty good job. Um, and one thing I like about this motherboard, you don't actually need a physical hard drive, so I've got an A-Data uh, MSATA drive, and it's plugged into the back of the unit. It's just plugged right in there. It's really fast. My one gripe is with Z77, the MSATA only runs at 3 gigabits per second instead of 6 gigabits per second, but that's, uh, th the difference is actually not as much as you would think when you're actually doing your operating system and stuff. You know, it's, you really don't notice much of a difference in the two, and there's lots of forum posts and lots of articles to back that up. So, and that leaves lots of room in the case for us to stuff metal inside it. Yeah, just <laughs> shove all kinds <laughs> of things in there. No hard drive. Actually, um, if you guys remember, like the Mac SE or the Mac Classic, it's a, it was a, it was a, it was a twenty first century Mac Classic. Everybody wants us to be wants us to run an emulator on here. Yeah, well, we'll actually, we'll get one. I did have a Mac SE emulator on a previous incarnation, like maybe version one, but it was just so ridiculous that it's like, no, this is just. No. Uh, we should probably do it for video. I mean, <laughs> if, if you guys will share it, I mean, let us know if you'll share it if we do a Mac emulator thing with this. Maybe yeah. I'll even play Frogger or something. What what games were out for that thing? I don't even remember. Yeah, we need to do that for the updated V3, especially when you can just grab the little... There's going to be little wire handles on the side, so you can grab the wire handles and yank the LCD, and it'll just scissor out from inside the display. We just need to get some sort of a swivel on the... On the the head of it, I guess. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the specs, we've got an i3 in there. Uh, of course, we've got the Asus um, 760 DirectCU 2. Uh, that's the overclocked version. Um, last but not least, we also have some RAM in there. We've got uh, 16 gigabytes of A data RAM running at 2133 megahertz. So that's what it, that's what it is. What's the uh, power supply? It's garbage, right? Yeah, the power supply is, is 380 watts. Uh, yeah, 380 watts of garbage. What, what's the brand name on it? Like Jeez. Diablo Tech. Diablo Tech, yes. So it's it's, uh, um, it's uh, not it's you know eighty plus. This one's seventy six plus, <laughs> which is not a real thing. It's a fire starting kit. You know, it comes with kindling. <laughs> Just lay this on top of your power supply. So I wouldn't recommend this power supply. I would recommend the Silverstone eighty plus power supply. That's four hundred and fifty watts, but it's more expensive. This was like thirty nine bucks or whatever at Micro Center. So it was like a. There we go. We'll try it out with this, and we'll just watch it with a you know fire hose in case anything goes wrong. The guy at the local Micro Center actually said that SFX wasn't a thing. I laughed. They wanted to sell me a 280 watt flex ATX power supply, and then I was like, "Wait, what? What about this one?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, I guess you could. I guess you could do that." <laughs> the one, one that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> what about this non-existent power supply? Honestly. Um, yeah. So this is version one. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this thing. We've been using this on the tech. If you guys have any ideas for version two that maybe we haven't thought of, we thought of just about everything. But I'm sure you guys can think of a few more things. 
let us know. Uh, Benchmarks, who cares? It's I mean, I'm not going to be playing games on this, really. It did do pretty well at, at Bioshock, even at, uh, even at some really high resolutions. So. Well, we did swap in an i5 in there to do some testing, but we didn't really have a spare i5, so it's just running on an i3 by default. Yeah, and it's, it's doing a decent job. So I have a lot more fun doing hardware hacks than I do when I'm doing like a hardware review. I actually get really bored with a lot of the hardware reviews because I kind of feel like every other website does the same thing, and if all the results don't match up, then we have fist fights back and forth, and it gets really boring doing all that stuff. So we have a lot more fun with stuff like this. And we're going to do more hardware hacks because we get to look at the hardware. We get to play with the hardware. We get to test the hardware so we can give you guys some good, you know, like review style information. But then we get to bastardize the hardware uh, and really make it more tech syndicate style like this. This is a really nice LAN party machine. This is the window way. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some more hardware hacks coming up. And we've got one that's very secret, but you, can you give them a little bit of information about what we're doing? Okay, so there's a Seiki 4K display. Now, it's different it's because... 39 inches and there's a 30-inch yes. version. I'm not sure if that's 4K as well. Now, maybe. the interesting thing about this television is that it can do 120 hertz at 1080p, or you can do 30 hertz at 4K, which is 4 times 1080p. That just doesn't cut it for gaming. 30 frames a second. Well... You know, V-Sync, not, not up, making me happy. Upon further investigation, it turns out the panel itself can handle 120 hertz at 4K, but the electronics can't drive that. So... What if, well, it's fine. I mean, if somebody beats us to it, more power to them. I'll buy a board from them. So, but <laughs> yeah. basically the question that we're working on behind the scenes is, what if you replace the controller in this Seiki 4K television with a proprietary controller that takes like two dual link DVI things, that's a split monitor, which is kind of like the Asus monitor, maybe, and use that. And so you have a video card that's two dual link things and your dis your monitors split into left and right halves. Could you do that with this cheap TV? You're working on the guy that made the board for this, right? Yes. So we'll we, see what we get. We are already prototyping things. You need to become a friend. And uh, yes. all, all the stuff we talked about, guys, if you guys want to get one of these screens and just build something out of it, maybe hang it on the wall, use it as a, an auxiliary screen, or even mount it on the side of your case, uh, all the links to get this stuff, uh, the, you probably want to pick up the screen on eBay. You can get them from China if you buy them in bulk, like from Alibaba or something. But we actually got it on eBay, and we'll we'll link you guys, um, you know, like a, a seller that we think is, is good. So we'll link you that. And we'll also uh, link to a place where you can buy the controller card as well, or the controller PCB. And, and that's all you need to know. And the, all the links are going to be in the description. Um, or you could just click on the screen right now. It'll take you to our website where all everything is for you, you know, all yeah. laid out. Yeah, with the parts that we found for you guys, you guys should be able to do a similar project. The hardest part, honestly, is going to be doing a mount for your LCD. And yeah, that's really idle. just, that's arts and crafts and glue. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use metal. You can totally do it out of wood. Yeah. It'd be a good project. The, the electronic skill level is probably like a 201 skill level. So no soldering required. Just be gentle, and uh, you got to connect up some things, and you got to crimp some wires. You might have to do a little soldering for the power cord. That's like third date type stuff. Yeah, it's very easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, um, subscribe if you want more videos like this. Let us know. I have a lot more fun, so I'm hoping you guys say, yeah, more videos like that. And I know Wendell has a lot more fun with this kind of stuff. Yeah, we need to build the iFinity version of this. <laughs> we'll see if it if if the displays folded up like a Z. The displays would protect one another and then you set it down so you can land party and it'll take a little bit of a beating and then when you set it down the displays would open up and then you would have affinity the best worst idea ever <laughs> all right guys we'll see you next time yeah.